Now, another issue we have to work with in pronouns is the idea of agreement. The basic principle behind pronoun agreement is fairly simple. Uh, basically, a pronoun or pronouns must match the words they refer to. And if you've already looked at subject verb agreement, this is going to be fairly simple. If you start with a singular noun, you're going to need to use a singular pronoun. And if you have a plural noun, you're going to use a plural pronoun. And so, what we want to do is, first off, you're going to find the pronoun. You're going to find the word the pronoun refers to. And then you're going to see whether that is singular or plural. And I've already given those rules in another video, remembering things like if there's only one of something, it's singular. More than one is plural. A uh, compound with and is plural. A compound with or, it's going to match whatever's closest. Uh, things like everybody and anybody are singular. All of those same rules apply. So, where people get into trouble with pronoun agreement happens when you're trying to be gender neutral. Because what happens in that case is um, a lot of times you're going to try to say, well, it, uh, we have something we don't know whether we're dealing with a male or female person. Let's use something gender neutral. And so I will often see sentences like, a student should keep their backpack neat. Now, the problem with this one is we have the singular student and the plural there. So that doesn't work. So then the question is, what does work? Well, many years ago, way back in the Dark Ages, the solution was always to use the masculine gender, his. A student should keep his backpack neat. And this was actually the correct construction uh, for hundreds of years. This was the way to do it. Uh, however, somewhere around 1970, somebody kind of realized, well, half the human race is not male. So this doesn't really work. So what do we do instead? Well, some people came up with a construction using a slash. His slash her. That kind of does the trick in that it's singular and it also covers both genders, but it is a little bit awkward. For one thing, how do you pronounce it? His or? Uh, it's a little weird. Um, so it kind of doesn't really work all that well. Now, I have a sort of side story here. My husband uh, used to work as a technical writer and editor uh, at Sandia Labs, and he worked a whole lot with engineers. And engineers like efficiency. Engineers like this kind of slash construction. Um, however, as I mentioned, it's awkward. And my husband actually came up with a universal, all-purpose um, third-person pronoun to uh, cope with that situation, uh, which was S slash H-E slash I-T. Uh, now, if you want to know how that's pronounced, well, he's from Texas. Anyhow, so what happens, at least for me, when I see this slash construction, I find it awkward. When I see this, I think of this. So we don't want to do that. So what other options do we have? Well, we have his or her. OK, now we've avoided that awkward slash construction. We have covered both genders. So this is OK in small doses. It's okay if you once in a while have something like this. 
just don't have a whole lot of it. If you have a paper that's full of this, his or her, his or her, her, his, 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 her, his, 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 it gets wordy and it gets tedious. So while this works in small doses, if you have a longer thing that's full of this, you want to find another method. And one is sort of an equal opportunity, use each half the time. So this works pretty well. Um, because, uh, so what you can do is you can flip a coin to decide which one to use, or alternate paragraphs between his and her, or uh, one of my old English teachers uh, uh, proposed what she called the subtle feminist agenda, which is using his when it's a negative connotation and her when it's positive, as in a good driver keeps her car well tuned, a bad driver never knows what's going on under his hood. Uh, so that works as well. On the other hand, there is yet another even better way to fix it. I mentioned back here at the top, you can't use the singular student and the plural there. You can't use the plural to refer to the singular. However, you can use there to refer to a plural. So the presto, change a wonderful, fantastic, quickie, easy way to fix it is to make the whole thing plural. And so you get students should keep their backpacks neat. Presto changeo. No problem at all. Neat and tidy, no mess, no fuss. You have a plural matching a plural. You have to, it's automatically gender neutral. G they is automatically gender neutral, so you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about the awkward constructions. Probably 99% of the time, you can fix this kind of agreement problem simply by making everything plural. And once you have made everything plural, the problem just totally disappears. Now, once in a while, you may have a situation where you have to use the singular. And in that case, choose one of these other approaches, either the his or her, or switching back and forth half the time. But as I said, 99% of the time, you can fix this just by going through and making the whole thing plural, and then the problem just completely disappears.